So uh, this is for the one uh, 2.11 site admin can view credit application submitted by any dealer. Okay. And uh, and I have done this for uh, uh, when one or more applications submitted by at least two or more dealers. Okay, so you guys understand the requirement, everybody? Well, what was uh, what was that? So this one was the first uh, tree, I think, right? Um, Dipal, do you have a tree as well? Um, uh, actually, it's on my notebook. It's on your notebook. I can share the one you sent. Yeah, I have yeah. that one. Let's pull that up okay. so that we can understand. Yeah. It's here. Okay. So it's, uh, it's the fourth one that I'm. I want to discuss. All right. Okay. One or more by at least. Uh, one or more. Dealer. Yep. Dealer. Okay. Gotcha. That's the requirement 2.11. Okay. Yeah. All right. You can flip it to other way. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, Harsh, you, you want me to explain this? How I. Yes, correct. What's your thought process is and how you okay. came up. Okay. So, under the module, so under the module name, so this requirement is under the section uh, 2. 2.6.6 approve reject credit application. Okay. Uh, not, not this one, I'm sorry. So it's requirement. This is submit credit application, right? Yes, That's yes. Right. So it's under submit credit application and requirement 2.11. So it's under 2.6.5, uh, 2 it's credit uh, submit credit application. So that's why I have written module name here, submit credit application module. And under this module, we have requirement 2.11. And under that requirement, I'm doing the fourth leap. Yep. So awesome. the test priority is high. So to track the precondition. Yes. So as it's for the case, two or more dealers. So I, in, so I have mentioned, so like I am doing it for two dealers. So under preconditions, so there should be two dealers in the system with their credentials. And also there should be a, a side admin. He, he, he should also be there in the system. So that's why second precondition is set side admin. And okay. uh, third, the third one is uh, because there are two dealers. I have mentioned here dealer A has submitted one application and dealer B has submitted two applications. Okay. And uh, dependencies. Uh, um, hold on a second, <laughs> Dipo. Can you, yes. Did everybody understand clearly here uh, what she's talking about? So she has uh, she specified the first one. There are two dealers exist in the system, dealer A and dealer B. So she is uh, basically expecting two dealers A and B are already there in the system. Okay. Otherwise, what she has to do if if this, she doesn't have this one, she has to go and create the dealers yeah. and then use it in the stats. Uh, so you can do it here or leave it in the steps. Okay. Create brand new dealer, but you need to include all the steps otherwise. Okay. Okay. Um, the second one is site admin can log in. Yeah, right. So you are saying the site admin credentials are already set up, right? That's what that's what the second one is. Uh, third one, dealer A has submitted one application and dealer B has submitted two applications. So both dealers has created some applications in the system. Okay. So that, that's a precondition before she can execute her test case. Those things need to be set up. Okay. All right, go ahead, Dipo. Yeah, so the dependencies, uh, I'm not sure about this. So again, I have written the same thing, submit one credit application from dealer A account and submit two applications from dealer B because while writing this, I was not clear. So am I supposed to generate all the data like de dealer A, dealer B uh, so, and perform those tests as well? Like if dealer A is able to submit or dealer B right. or- Typically or, dependency is on the other modules or an external system. So you, you don't need to put it here because that's already part of your preconditions. Okay. Okay. And under test summary, 
to validate if the site admin can view credit application submitted by any dealers. This test is performed under scenario. There are two dealers, A and B, in the upfront system, and one dealer has submitted one application and other dealer has submitted two. And site admin, he is supposed to view the three of these. So I'm pro like providing all the details here. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you, you have a long time. Long yeah, summary, which is fine. Goals, but that's okay. Yeah, which is fine. Okay. So in the steps, the first step is uh, enter the URL for the uh, system and the R flown page that will open in the expected result. Okay. And the second step is uh, now login as a site admin, enter the user ID and password, and the data is given in the data section. Okay. And uh, first, two, first two is from the test case that I sent you, right? Yes. So the only new addition is three. I'm sorry? The only new addition is the third step. Yes, yes, yes. So okay. in the third step after login as a site admin, so click the view application button and verify the first is application submitted by dealer one like we uh, said as a site admin i am doing it as a site admin and i will verify if there is application by dealer one and there are two applications submitted by dealer b and uh, i'm supposed in the expected result i'm supposed to see three of the applications submitted by a and b both of the dealers okay uh, so cool. Dimple, when you gave this thing to the two other classmates, okay. Did they any, had any feedback or you have updated this after the feedback? Uh, no, it was before. It's the same. Like, okay. If they, they were not sure if I, I'm doing right or wrong. Okay, so what was their feedback when you said they were not sure if you're doing right or wrong? What was their question? Uh, Actually, uh, um, I do not remember. Like, uh, so uh, our question was: uh, Do we have to mention in each and every uh, test case uh, the link? Do we have to provide the link to open the website? Like the first two steps. So the question I have: If remember, I said if you give this test case to somebody else, they should be able to execute it. So if you don't provide the data. What will they log in? How do they know which site to go in? Okay. See, what happens is like in the companies here, so the, the, the companies like Nationwide, right? The people are sitting here, the, the QA folks leaves. Uh, maybe um, and, uh, they, they give it somebody else in India to execute it. So mm -hmm. they, in the, those guys don't know. They're just going to follow the steps and they will say, oh, is, is, am I getting the right results? Do I see three applications or not? That's all that they will do. They don't use their brain. So it needs to be something very clear when you write it so that somebody else can pick it up and just execute the step. So that's the reason. All right. Any other question? The team members have it? Do, do, does anybody have it? Do you guys have here? a question before Marshall and I provide our people? Do you have any questions? So in the third step, okay. can we do the sub steps or should we put it as a different step there? When you say sub step, you're talking about just break this two yeah, down into two different, different steps. Yeah, yeah. which can, is fine. You can, which is fine. Yeah, it, it, that's how I would have done it. Okay. But as long as the information is there and it's clear, it okay. should be okay. But okay. you can break it down in multiple steps. Okay. Verify. Okay, dealer. I can see dealer A's applications. And I can see dealer B's. Okay. Which is okay. Any other questions? Clip, I have a question about this one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so when I was writing this test, so first I started as a, okay, like I was doing like from, from starting to the end, like I already assumed some assumptions in the preconditions. Okay. So uh, earlier I was doing like, okay, open, go to dealer A account, submit a application. But then when I was writing that, then I thought of uh, like, while submitting application from dealer A. So I need to give all the information about the credit application because I have to complete a credit application, correct? That is correct. So I have, 
yeah i have to mention all the required fields and it's a two it's a big application so it was not possible for me or even i was not clear you took a shortcut dimple that's what dilip is saying um, yes now once you get more experience uh, and uh, if you're experienced team yeah you can take shortcuts but otherwise okay. how how you are assuming that somebody else who is executing they know how to go create the credit application and so forth yes so that, that's that's a drawback here because okay. if you don't have all everything in the steps like uh, you log in as a dealer a go create this application submit it log in as dealer b uh, go create yeah. application submit it. But so you should include those steps from when you are starting yeah. out i think that would make it more clear yeah, okay the way so simple, you detail out the simple login task into detailed steps okay but the main steps which was creating an application you took a shortcut there okay right. okay so if i create the application credit application so do i need to uh, give all the all the fields for the credit application in the data section so if, if you can refer it in just a one step that create credit application using the data provided in the data field and then just list out everything in the data field. okay okay now the question i have for you is even with the shortcut right what are the application when you say application submitted by one dealer a I don't know what is submitted by dealer A. How would I get that information? Uh, uh, your question is, I'm not clear with your question. Okay, scroll it down to step three. Okay. You say click the view application button and mm -hmm. very application submitted by one dealer A. If I'm a site administrator, which application I'm supposed to click? How do I know that this particular application that you're mentioning in this step is submitted by the URL. Okay, you you mean to say like as a site admin, I do not know if this application belongs to dealer A or dealer B. When I click on the view application and there are 500 applications in there, which one you want me to look at it? Okay, so then like there will be three applications like then I can... know which three out of 500 I need to see. So it's mm -hmm. by after opening the application, I will, uh, site admin will come to know this, this belongs to which dealer with the dealer ID. Yeah. Hang on for a moment. I have a follow up question on that, but go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, when I submit the, the, the credit application, you should mention that this credit application is from Dira A and this one is from Dira B. I understand, but remember, this is a big system, right? I don't know who has submitted what application. I'm side admin. How do I know which one is submitted by Dira A unless I have to go through it? If, I, if you want me to click on every application and look for it, then write that step. If I give it to you, how do you know which application is submitted by Dealer? Okay. So the better way is identify the application ID and, and then put that in the precondition information as well as in the test data. Without the application ID, I don't know which one you want me to take a look at because there are tons of them. So when you guys look at the a credit application information, right? Uh, in the system design, that all the entities, what what data is associated with the credit application? There is the application ID field, which is supposed to be unique. So you need to understand what is, what is there. And for every application they will create, it will have some unique ID, basically. So you capture that, those unique IDs and verify that this unique ID, application ID, belongs to this credit application A, and that's what I'm supposed to verify as a site address. So you specify those IDs as well, generally, in the test case. So do you have to mention or the fact that uh, this uh, credit ID is for the dealer A? Dealer A and dealer for dealer A. Yep, that's exactly what it is. For all three applications, yep. I would expect to see an ID here, so I know which one you want me to take a look at. 
still uh, you need to to say even though on the top of that this the data IPA that way when you come on the yeah that has to be in precondition also oh. that like this data or, or like it's I have to have those test data. So think of this way, right? I come to this step and there is only one application. It's from which dealer? I don't have a data unless you provide me that data. So is it like uh, the application will have a unique ID or the dealer will have a unique ID? Application will have a unique ID. Each dealer application. also has a unique ID. Okay. But here we are not worried about the dealer ID. Okay. We are more worried about the application ID because who is the dealer who has submitted this application? That information will be in the credit application. So, like, so Dipal, did you understand? Yes, yes. The level of detail you need to provide. Now, it, it, it's a warning, right? But sometimes you have to be careful with the warning. There are three application inside admit account to view, right? It, it's not there. It's there are three application that can be viewed by site admin. It's not nothing is in their account. Okay. Just a clarification. Right. Just wording clarification wording. The wording so that it makes sense for somebody who's reading it. Because as you go through it, sometimes the description becomes an important. Okay. Like looking at the business problem, everybody had a different interpretation. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, now this one post condition. Think about it what is true in the system, right? So, this one precondition site admin, admin should have been able to view anyway, right? So, in this case, unless I'm changing something, it is okay if you don't put anything in the post condition. Yeah, you can skip it because you didn't change anything in the system. You are just viewing just the viewing information. It. That's all. Okay. There is nothing changed, right? right? So there is no post condition. There is no here. status change or anything in the system. Okay. Can you clear like what's the status change? Like what will be the criteria when we will entering post condition? Because I'm not clear with the post condition. So if I go ahead and create a new credit application, then the post condition is now new credit application is present in the system. If I do it, a um, create a new user, then the post condition will be there. Okay. If I'm performing just a login activity, then the post condition is now I'm successfully logged into the system. Okay. You're making certain change into the state of the system. Here, you didn't make any change to the state of the system. You okay. were just putting the data. Yes. It's okay if you put it, there's nothing wrong in it. What I'm just saying, Typically, post condition you put it with whatever was changed in the system. And what's the status of the system now after executing this? Can you what is it? Can you repeat that? No, the dependency means what? The dependency. Uh, dependency is between the system, so like an email notification, right? The system is dependent on the email server to be up and running. That's considered a dependency uh, for the for the system. Uh, but here there are no dependencies. Here there, there is we are not talking about interacting with any third party system or anything else. So dependency is, is probably like you can leave it empty. Yep. So you cannot be able to get like uh, an example to show us the way you need to master the dependence. So email, right? Uh, just uh, that, that's the example I gave you. So let's say we are sending a notification. In that test case, you probably want to make sure uh, you mention the dependence. Server email server is up and running, uh, and uh, you can communicate with the email server. Yeah. Without that, you cannot say, like, let's say you are interacting with Gmail, right? Sending email through Gmail account. If the Gmail is Google is down, you cannot send the email. There are no notifications going in, in the, through the system. So that's what it talks about dependency with the third party systems. Now, in the test data here, Dimple, one of the thing I would also do it is put the information about the dealer A and dealer B. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, like uh, this under this test case, I have already assumed dealer A has submitted and dealer B. So, I don't need to log in into those accounts. Do I need to provide that as well? 
If you are creating credit application, then yes. Okay. If you are not logging in as a dealer, then you don't. Okay. Just have to say that, hey, this to dealer is already there because there is a reference to both of that when you're viewing it. So that's why yes. you need data in the test data. Okay. And uh, like if if I if I do all the like end to end like uh, opening dealer A account and creating an application, so provide so, credentials to dealer A and dealer B. So in that case, so in that case, it's like uh, are we, so there are other functionalities uh, included in in this test case as well. If like if the system is able to submit application from a dealer account like those, so do we when while performing the test, so as a QA is he supposed to do all the work, or if he is doing only this test, so his work is only limited to this test only. Nepal, somebody has to do the work and it would be you as a QA. So okay. whether you step or not, you still need those two dealers. And if those two dealers are not there, okay, you have to go and create it first before you can execute your test test. Your precondition has to be there. Uh, whether So let me just put it that this way. If you don't put it in precondition, make sure you include all everything in your steps. Very good. Okay. Uh, but okay. that's what I would, that's the route I would recommend you guys don't take shortcuts, put everything in the steps so that it's clear, yeah. which is fine. If you have 20 steps, which is okay. Well, think of it. It's a long one, but it gives you more insight on what you need to do it in order to make this thing repeatable and predictable. So if I look at it here, repeatable and predictable, are you guaranteeing me? That every time those credit application will be present, you cannot sometimes, right? So, if I were to be writing it as a key table way, I would go and log in as a reader, create that credit application, note down that number, and log out, log in as a dealer B, create those two credit application, note down those numbers, log out, and log in as site admin and make sure that the three numbers that I got captured it in the previous steps, I can see all those three applications. Yep, you have to put the test data for each one. Yeah, in, in this scenario, yes, here. Otherwise, you, you can put, just put it part of the step. Attachment. No, step here, right? Okay. This application is created. Okay, you note down the number mm -hmm. in the step. Okay. Then in the later step, you can say verify this things are there it's 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 a full-time job right this is the qa is a full-time job yeah. for for people that's why they hire you full-time because you have to be very detailed and thorough on, on whatever you do everybody clear then how to implement this test case Dipal, do you have any other questions you i'm good it? i'm good uh you can stop sharing then Okay, let's have second person from online share it. Um, can any of you, uh, either Waibabi or Paurangi, want to share? Yes, I can share. Okay, good. And then we'll work through with that classroom after. <laughs> so this is 2.4 requirement. System shall notify via email to dealer, ARF representative, area manager, and regional manager for any approval or rejection by lender. So I have yes. done this leaf rejection, email notification, all receive email notification. Okay, so your scenario here is okay. It's a reject, they are rejecting. Well, during the rejection, this people, get all everybody gets email notification. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, so that's, that's your scenario or test case you are testing. Okay. Can you expand it or zoom in so that we can see it uh, better if it's uh... yep. All right. So uh, one thing which I want to ask is module name. So is it an correct module name for particular test case or we can just give um, so module name according to us? So think of it, when would this actual thing occur? Okay. It will happen when a lender approves or rejects it, right? Yes. So whichever module you have that requirement, which says the lender can approve or reject 
for that application, that module should be here. So, uh, yeah. Blender, yeah, sorry. Blender management, right? That's the module. Okay. All right. So in the test title, do we have to write a particular, uh, like if I'm doing the rejection one, so do, do I have to write system shall notify why the lender is rejecting application or just like this system shall notify why email for rejection? I would do it a little bit different because this is more like a sentence. What I would just talk about is um, email notification received by appropriate users during the um, credit or like it's um, lender updates, right? Something like that. But for now, this, this should be okay too. Yeah, I mean, uh, from, uh, yeah, whatever scenario you picked out, right? Test, test scenario from the three. It should clearly say that basically lender is rejecting and uh, the email notification going out to every all the yeah. users. Um, so you should say say that it's clearly in the word. Here I'm not sure whether it's lender is rejecting or somebody else is rejecting. I wouldn't be clear yeah. if I look at it. And the okay. test title is supposed to be very clear so that people know okay what's exactly. happening in the test case. What are okay. we testing? So for a particular leaf. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Particular leaf. Uh, okay. Yep. This time. Okay. So for precondition, I have written all the names and uh, they are already created. So these are users you are talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So hang on. We'll, we'll come back to we'll precondition. Back. I want to see all the steps first. Okay. Yes. So should I scroll down to the steps? Okay, so it's, no, no, go to the description. Summary, yep. Right, so hang on there, right? So read this one, right? The test validates that system will notify dealer, art rep, area manager, and regional manager for rejection by lender. Yeah. So this is the- uh, You have to describe it, yep. manager, when a credit application is rejected by lender, because oh. the context is credit application. Yep. And I think this one is more appropriate for test title as well. Yeah. So you can just copy paste in the test title so that it's uh, clear. Yes. What is your test about? Okay. okay. So test title can be long. Yeah, yeah, it can be long. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it's just title, so it should be short. The key thing is that just by looking at test title, mm -hmm. somebody should be able to understand what is going to be the purpose of this test case, right? When, when it's long, I don't want you to write three paragraphs for the test title. Yeah. The summary can have three paragraphs, but the title should be a one sentence. Okay. Okay. So uh, for dependency, do, do I have to write anything because it's in email notification, right? All right. So, so think of this way. Can you execute this test case if the email server is down? No. Okay. So that, to me, that's a clear dependency. Yeah. Because it's an external component to the system, right? But you are still dependent. That external component has to be up and running before you can execute this test case. Yes. So what what should I write in dependency in this case? Like so, email server should be up and running? Right. Yeah, email server. Yeah. yeah. We don't have to specify anything else, right? Not particular what email server. Okay, hang on. Yeah, that's what he is going to put. That's what he will put that here. Dependency, update the dependency with the email server. Okay. So for the test case, uh, I was not sure before that we have to write each and everything. So. Uh, I just wrote this to after getting clarification. Okay. So a couple of just general words. Whenever you write test steps, it mm -hmm. should talk about the actions that you're taking. 
Okay, so in step three, where you you have it more, what system should do it? It's not about what system should do it. It's about as a user, what action I'm doing it should be in the test steps. So you should never have a word like should, could type of thing or would in those descriptions. Because it's so about the actions I'm taking it. So there should be no should in this third step. Yeah, but also let's look at it, right? So you're logging in as a lender, okay? And then what are you doing? You would first find an application, right? Yeah. So where's that step? So think about logically how would you would do it? As a user, don't, don't write it just yeah. like it's a lump of hey, this is what's going to happen. Step by step, yeah. what you will be doing. As I said, I mean, you know where the really the lenders have and see what they are doing basically and write all the steps. If I'm a lender, what I would do to reject the application? Uh, I'll pick out one application, open it up, and then reject it. Uh, select the reject status and then save it. Yeah. That right. would trigger the that should trigger the notification. Okay. So now in step three, you mentioned about the application. Yes. Do you expect that application to be present already in the system? Yes. Okay. Why it's not in precondition then? Second, what should be the status of that application? Can it be any application in any status? No. So, so provide those details. Because without that, I can't execute this. I have no idea. What if you, you put an application and that application is already in the rejected status or an approved status? Can I do anything with this? Yeah. Is the system supposed to send an email when I do anything with that? So you, I think that there are a few things missing here, right? Yeah. Um, so first of all, the precondition, you don't have precondition. So we expect you to go and create the kind of application in the steps because you don't have precondition here, right? And there are, so in order to create that, you have to log in as a dealer at this point, and then you will assign to specific lender as well. So you have to go through all these different steps and capture that here in this particular test. Yeah, also I would go to the path that Herschel is talking about. I would always create a credit application and then perform the rejection action. Because okay. remember my test case has to be repeatable. If I just set it up first time that, hey, the credit application is already present in the system, and I run this once, can I run it again? I can't, right? Because now that application is already in a different status. Yeah. Okay. When Dorinda opened up his account, so the, I think uh, I was wondering the only one thing that I'm supposed to say mostly when I did a, a credit application. You do? I don't know. Is that the only thing? So as soon as I log in, am I directly taken to the application which is I'm supposed to update? How the system knows what application I'm going to update? What if there are like five applications pending for me? Which one I'm supposed to get? Right. When it when it open it, then I see the email notification from the dealership. But I'll say about the credit okay. When I log in. Yeah. Did you see it anywhere requirement that the notification will be viewed from the system itself? I'm getting an email notification. I'm not checking email from the system. I'm checking email completely outside. And then I'm logging into the system. Right? Um, maybe we can uh, have this thing corrected here, maybe uh, from scratch uh, to see if that helps you guys, uh, what steps we should be writing here. Okay, so let, let's do that exercise here. Um, can can you we, send in an email? Yeah, um, or, or you can stop sharing as well, and we can uh, just uh, 
And what I want to do is I actually want to take her. I'm going to make okay. changes to this thing. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead and sorry, uh, go ahead and say it. Pauram, was that Pauram? Yeah, it was Pauram. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and say it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to request access to modify. Okay. And you need to grant me um, that access. No, no, if she's sending an email, it will be no. Uh, are you sorry? Are you telling me to share? No, it's me. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, wait a second, okay? Uh, just uh, yes, uh, click a yes. Okay. Follow me. Yeah. All right. All right. So here, what we were talking about is, so this step number three is clearly not right here. Um, specifically, uh, when you don't have the right thing. I would even go for, I would start with the. Yeah, yeah. What, what I want to do is actually not the precondition. Let's. Uh, yeah, 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 no, but she's still need to fix the precondition. Okay. So the precondition is very generic. You need to be put that. That the lender exists in the system, dealer, user exists in the system, regional manager exists in the system, area manager exists in the system, and have a valid email address. L training exists. In the system, yeah. Your lender is misspelled. Yeah. Yeah. Dealer user. Dealer user uh, G training. Let me put the actual test data, right? Because you guys are given the test data as well. If you guys look at the sheet, um, you have all the accounts that's been given to you. So you can use them. Okay. Um, regional manager, uh, user, uh, RM training exists in the system. Okay. Area manager, user, AM training exists in the system. And our prep. So these are go ahead and put the each one of them as a valid email address in the system also. The valid email address. Okay. So these all accounts are there properly set up with the valid email addresses because you are testing the email, right? The scenario is for valid email. Uh, so let's update the test title also and cross out the precondition. The other one, this one, the old one. Yeah. Cross it out the old one. Let me just remove it. Yeah. And I'm just going to put this in the test title um, basically. Put the credit for credit application rejection. No, no. Yeah. So, yep, yep, yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this test title, then we have the precondition here. What's that dependency? Dependencies is missing here, right? Yeah. Um, email server is up and uh, running. Okay. This title. Now come back to the steps now. Okay. So this is the real step. So think about I'm a lender, right? Um, now this particular, we are assuming that there is there are no uh, there is no credit application or anything here. So that's our assumption here. So what you need to log in as? Who can create the credit application first of all? So I need to log in log into dealer. dealer account. User account. Dealer user account. You with using credentials. Provided in test data or G training. You can put it here or you can list it out in test data. Doesn't matter. G training and the training password. Okay. So that's the first thing. 
then create credit application using test data provided in test data section. Okay. Now here at this step, since there will be a big list, um, you can list out everything here in the test data section, or maybe refer to a some other file where you have kept all the test data. When we talk about tools, right? You can there, there are ways to upload the Excel data and all those things in the tool. So that's something you can do it um, separately. Go ahead and like question for the one or two element of test data. So, they know. so here you can say credit application. I'm just gonna create a section here. Not create credit. Like a first name. ABC, last name, XYZ, whatever test data that you have. You can list out all those required fields, all those required elements for the credit application. You, you can list it out. And where would you find all the required elements? In the design. The design document. The design document, you have entity this section, right? Anything that's marked, yes, you have to identify all the elements. That's the minimum information you have to put it in for credit application. Okay. Where do we find it? Design document. Where, where was the data element? Since the make sure you you guys go through the those documents one more time, okay? Because you don't want to forget what what is new to you. Yeah. That's your Bible or whatever uh, we are thinking. The source of truth. Yep. Uh, credit application created successfully. So, as a tester, do we always get the design document too with the requirement document? Uh, again, remember, like it's at what point you're writing the test cases? It's the, the design case, right? Yeah. By that time, the requirements is already flushed out. The design document is already created by the developer. Now, if you're in the HR world, right, yeah. you will get that data working with your business users or working with your developer. This, this is all those things. In the HR world, generally, you will be working in the design session. Okay. When they are designing, it's, a, it's called like a three amigos meeting. So, you three amigos meeting, you are QA developer and the business analyst. They all sit together. They go through drawing board exercise, what they are building and how they are building. So you will be sitting there so you understand what they are building. And, and so that uh, you have more clarity around that. And if you don't have this information at the point when you're writing it, you, that's should, when you should ask, yeah. hey, what all the information is gonna be. Okay, for sure. Go ahead and change this. Don't give the specific yeah. number, just note down the application. So it could be different everything. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just making it generic here. Okay. Now log out of the system. Successfully logged out. Okay. Now I'm making this quite far away. Or login. Login is. Uh, the login screen is displayed or application on page is displayed. Okay. Go ahead and change our show number four. This is the other user successfully logged in. Okay. No, in the uh, expected results. Yeah. Okay. And number five. Okay. Now, what you have the credit application, you note down the ID. Um, you have the ID available. So now you log in as a dealer user or lender user. Okay. So what's supposed to happen when you log in as there? Okay. Uh, Lender user 
home page is displayed. Now, Again, how do I writing shortcut? You make sure you put in yeah, all those details. All those details, okay. right? But here, there is a there is a design diagram as well in the system design, where when the user logs in, this is this is where I'm getting this information. How do I know what home page lender will see? So there is a design that there is a page flow diagram and all those things available. So you know, okay, I'm, I'll be on the, my home page for the lender. But so you need to put together all the piece of information together, okay? Now verify that, uh, or at this point I'm on the home page. So now I'm accessing access credit application created by dealer. Um, so one important thing. Right. You have a page flow diagram, and that you should look at that to see it is can I access this directly from my home page? Yeah. If not, is there a, any other tab that like it's credit management, right? That then you're supposed to click it. So yep. make sure you understand what the flow is and then put that steps detail. Okay. Okay, access credit application created by dealer in the step number three. You can refer to the tab or put the ID or how you want to do it here because we are referring to this particular credit application that we just created earlier. Okay. And uh, open it. Display, right? Display, yep. Now, step number seven, what is the important step here? Well, what are you testing? Approval right? or reject. Reject, right? Yeah. So that's what you just action you want to specify here. Um, Rejection. Rejection. Reject credit application by yeah. selecting rejected status. Clicking save, right? Or submit. Status and save. Okay. Credit application is rejected. So then rejected. And status. email notification is sent out. Okay, because that's something supposed to happen. That's what you need to verify here. And now I have a question. Yes. Um, the, uh, before the vendor rejects the, the credit application, it doesn't have to be you. Doesn't have to what? To review. But it's again, in this case, think about what is the test scenario you're trying to do. It. You are just trying to say, hey, if I reject it, will they get the email or not? So in this case, I, I'm not worried about reviewing it because I'm validating the functionality of rejection. Not necessarily looking at it as, hey, should I approve or reject this credit application? That's why you're not writing that separate. Okay. That will be separate, separate, second, separate test case where you can review it and make sure all okay, the information read only and those things. That's a different test case than here. Okay, so you have to write a separate test case. Hang on, just one minute. Sure. So if you did the credit application notification send out, right? Are you done at this point? No. Well, I guess. What is the goal of this test test? So somebody sure. said, no. what do I need to do? So basically you have to log in into the, all the user email accounts and check one by one if all of one the- That's correct. Right. So make sure you put those steps in here. Yep, those are the- Because without that, steps. you don't know whether the functionality worked or not. Those are the most important steps uh, here. So now you open open email. Email, open email accounts for all users. For dealer, you can list out separately. Okay. Uh, I would yeah. list, out list out separately, separately. because if it fails, I want to know which one fits. Okay. And verify right. that email is received, notification is received. 
So in that case, when we are opening all the specified uh, users, all four so or five, whatever the dealer lender. So yep. it will be almost like the uh, exhaustive case for life has been like notified and not notified, where we will get to know who has not been notified. Right. Right. Okay. So that's one way you can do it, right? In okay. this case, it's all of them are one, right? Okay. So it will be one of the step will fail. One of the steps will fail. Right. And that will cause the overall test case to fail it because if one of them didn't receive it. If all of them were received it, right, then all step will be successful. Mm -hmm. And therefore, your test case will be successful. So when I am <laughs> mentioning the exhaustive method, when I am writing the steps for that exhaustive method, should I, or may the steps will be keep continuing for a longer? Steps? No, in those cases, if you're writing separate test cases yeah. for exhaustive, yeah. then you will have only that particular small. Then you stop it right then here. You stop right here. For stop, the, stop right here. You don't check for the others. Okay. Now, so one this, particular user I'm yeah, checking, yeah. so it will be stopping. Right. Here. Stopping right there. Yep. And as long as the, the, in that scenario, yeah. you just verify dealer, yeah. just the email, the and you are done. Yeah. Your test yeah. case is good. You open a second test case and start writing again. Okay. Yeah. All I'll, the steps. Yeah. I will be a little bit more clear here okay. than just saying generic email notification, yeah. right? Email notification notifying that this particular credit yeah. application mm -hmm. is rejected has been received. Yeah, because you don't know whether it's a rejection email or you, <laughs> even if they reject it, you might get approval notification. So you need to verify the actual content of the email, okay. making sure it's a rejection only. Yeah, notifying application created in step three is rejected. Notifying, uh, application created in step three has been rejected by lender. It received through yeah. still email notification. Yeah. Uh, Dilip, I have a question in this one. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so uh, this test scenario we're doing rejection and all the users they are accepting the email email notification and we also have other leaf in which we have one or more doesn't receive the other yeah. leaf so, so in, will... if if i'm writing the test case but for the other leaf if one or more uh, user doesn't receive the notification so in that case right so you yes. have one received but then you have uh, the precondition will change as well, right? Because yeah, you have an invalid, yeah, invalid account for one of the users. Okay. okay because here, in the precondition, we said it's all valid accounts. Yes. So, like, then, so do I need to write four steps here? Like, at which step I will say, okay, the second one did not get, or maybe I will write on the fourth, fourth one, the fourth yeah, one, okay. like, it's up to you. If you are trying to validate that the three received and the fourth one didn't receive, okay. then I would write the three that successful first and then write the fourth one. But if you just say that one of them didn't receive it, then I would just write that as the first step and then yeah. validate it and it's done. Because what I'm testing it is for that person not receiving email. Okay. Then copy and paste. Okay. So so do we need to mention the mention that like this user did not receive the application? Yes. Or? Because that would be in your precondition, right? Yes, Who's yes. Valid? So you have okay. to be specific on that. Okay. Change ten and eleven seconds. Yeah, just uh, again verification would remain same. So 
So depending on whichever the system they have, right? If they have a Gmail and you go into the Gmail, typically the way you have to do the testing is first you have to, as part of the data setup, you create Gmail accounts with all those four credentials. And then you provide those as well, creating those users so that now you have access to the email address, right? Because in real life, you won't have access to the real user's email address. So you have to create a dummy account that you can use it for your testing purposes. So when you set up a lender, right? Uh, here, like L training. Uh, here, for example, if we are using L training, right? So make sure you have the L training with uh, set up, set that user with the Gmail account that you have access to. So you might put your maybe gifty at 0001 at gmail.com for that lender. So that you, you can log in and ultimately uh, and see the email whether it, that you received or not as a lender or users. But hoping everybody got the idea, right? How how we go about it and how to work so through this. I process. was thinking um, when you log in as a dealer, there is a banner place notification. Again, you can think about it because the system requirement says that it's supposed to be that. Does the system requirement say that I will be able to view all the notification within the system? It doesn't, right? All it clearly says is that they will receive an email notification. And the only way you can verify it by logging into the account and uh, see if you receive an email. Is that's, that's one thing you have to be very careful in. You will always have a temptation that, hey, if I would be owner, I would do it this way. Great, but you're not the one who's paying the check. The business users were paying it, so make sure you fulfill based on what requirement he or she wants it, and implement that, validate that. Okay. So this, uh, I have one dog with my mm -hmm. something, which I just want to be asking, but no, go ahead. Each and every uh, test case should start with the going into the URL or. You can put it like it's a precondition that site administrator is logged in into the system or dealer is already logged into the system. You okay. can so start with that. here, right? You can start with that. Okay. Yeah. So here, instead of logging as a whatever, right? Um, logging, you are first logging as dealer user here in this case. Mm -hmm. So you just say dealer is already logged into the system and it's on the home page. From okay. first step, you can ignore uh, basically. So this step will go away. This okay. second step will change. Dealer yeah. is already logged in. Um, okay. Again, preconditions say you have to be very careful on what you can do and what you don't want to do. So it's up to you. I mean, it's your judgment call. So the other way I want to think about it in reality, right? If you're doing a lender test and then you're doing it a dealer test, right? You are actually going to log out of the system and log in. Right, whether the steps are written here or not, you still have to do that. So as long as you're aware what you need to do, I would take the path of providing the detail because then I know I don't have to worry about anybody having a pre knowledge. They just follow this instruction as it's given and tell me whether it passes or not. That's it. Yeah. Also, it, another thing which you have said is. In down the road, right? Some of them decide that hey, certain tests we need to automate it. Then I have all the information I need to automate that step or that test case because right in one place. I don't have to worry about looking for this. Yeah, right. So when we talk about the email notification about the lender, the lender is getting an email notification from the dealer that he has been received that trade mm -hmm. notification. So does it go to his email ID or should he log in and then he can see the notification? Now, remember, it goes back to what Gifty was asking. Yeah. Right? The requirement clearly says that notification will be only in the email, right? Because there's a series of notification. Okay. When I log into the system, there is no notification aspect in the system. Okay. 
all the notification is out of band, what did they call it? Okay. That means it's in some other system, not in the system. So first he gets email, then he logins to the email. Right, right. So sometimes it may be, hey, we were just submitted mm -hmm. an email server takes like three minutes or four minutes to come in, but I log into the system. Mm -hmm. It'll automatically pop up like for me. Okay. So the it doesn't have to have, I cannot access till I receive the email. Don't think it that yeah. right? Because those two are two separate systems. Yeah. Now, if the notification was required to be in the system itself, mm -hmm. then most likely you can access till you get the notification and click on that. Okay. So it depends on what your requirement is. In this case, the requirement is clear that email is separate than the system. Okay. So there's no dependency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Because I saw most of the release, they saw uh, 1.0. Is there always 1.0? Sure. Again, those are the test case, not the system really. So when you're writing it for the first time, this is the first version, right? That's why it's one. If it's already there and I'm modifying it, it will be a different version. So in this case, it will be 1.1. Because for wrong, we wrote first one. And then Harshal went ahead and updated that. So it's a 1.1. It's a different version, keep just like a manually keeping track of the version of the document. That's all. There is no other significance. Okay. In the tool, it will automatically keep track of it. So you don't even worry about what version it is and so forth. Okay. Those are not the important ones, I would say. I think the key thing I would do is from priority and title down. That's the value. Everything else is going to be automatically generated by system when you're using it. ALM type of system. Yeah. Okay. So, Parangi, I would like you to do a favor. Send this test case once you're done in an email to Herschel so he can share it with the class. Yes. Okay. And I will share this uh, with the class, this particular one. Okay. Uh, stop sharing, Parangi. So, before you stop sharing, any questions from anybody? Did you guys have a good understanding of what you should be doing? Yeah. So in test data, so we have to provide email address for all these users. Yes. Email address and password. Yes. And do we have to, uh, right now I have provided system um, user ID and password for all the users. So do we have to write that too? Yeah, it's just already there, right? Yeah. So if you scroll it down, you still have access, right? In the test data, just put yep. you already dealer, have it dealer email address and a password. Okay, and uh, what should we write in the status? This is the plan, right? So you haven't executed this. This okay. test case is in the plan state, it's not there. Mm -hmm. So you in post condition, you will just say it. it's not system will notify, right? Because remember, this is what happens if it happened, right? So the way you want to do it is dealer user, RFAP, area manager, and regional manager received an email notification informing about the rejection of credit application by lender. Okay. okay. So post condition, we have to write after the actual test, or we can just write? No, you should write we... now. You should write now. What, what is expected post condition? Okay. If you, if you go back a little bit, um, Wait, what's, your, what's your question? Yeah, like, 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 like 11. So all of them open the, they receive the, the email uh, notification. Yep. So I was wondering, you can put like a number three, like a reject. So you know the rejection. Uh, no, rejection has already happened. Remember, this is just a notification. What is step number seven? Step number seven, he already rejected. Yes. Okay. So step number seven. And that costs the trigger for the email to go out. See here, credit application is rejected and email notification is sent out. And then you're going to verify because that's the important part. Your test is about verification, the email. Okay, is everybody good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, stop, stop sharing. Right. You see it how you had only three steps, right? 
but the level of detail you need to provide in test steps so that somebody can follow it and execute it. Yep. Okay. Um, February, you want to share your test case? Um, yeah, I can share it mine, uh, which I haven't corrected yet, but I just want to share what I just did it. Okay. Um, just one moment. She is first will send you an email. Once for when you send to him, he will forward it to her. Oh, can you see my screen? Okay, so I just uh, took this requirement uh, and I, I just was sharing to my team uh, about the second leave, which is this one. A uh, lender can only access uh, more than one application assigned. Okay. So I just want to share that the, that's the one. Yeah, make sure you guys pay attention, okay? Because uh, we mm -hmm. will review it and we're not gonna come back to this one. Uh, this because we are looking at different ones, right? Um, uh, Weiwei, can you zoom in a little bit? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, now at the bottom, you have this 100%. Just make it one twenty five. Just keep one uh, yeah. Spread on a couple of times. Yep. One I think it's, it's good. It's good. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, so the question was like more than one application. So, uh, so after you just show it before with the Purvangi, I didn't do anything, any correction in mind. I just want to show what what was my work. So I just put as uh, as an assumption like. Uh, I just took as a 10 credit application. So lender A has assigned to five credit application and lender B. So that's the way I just assume like it's more than one application assigned to different lenders. And that's what I put as a precondition here. Hold on to that. Yeah. Based on the test case that we just wrote, mm -hmm. what changes you need to make into this one? What changes you will make it to precondition? Can anybody tell from the class? A and B. So lender no, has to exist in the system. ID. Mm -hmm. The five application ID. Yeah. So lender A and B exist in the system, right? That's the first precondition. Then they have five applications okay. created by a dealer has assigned to them. Yeah. So those uh, IDs, you can capture it here. You have to all the IDs. Yeah, all the IDs or how you want to do it. Okay, I would go with the steps, but again, oh. you guys can. Also, what I would suggest is, does it matter whether you have two, two or, or you have a five? Yeah. Go, go with the low, lowest number. It's gonna increase your work a lot otherwise. If it's not adding five applications, we'll do the same work as two, then it's just go with two. It's more than one, right? So just yeah. go with the minimum number. Okay. And does it, I, if, if I look at your leave, mm -hmm. do I need a two different lenders? Uh, no, it doesn't mention, yeah. There is more than one application assigned to me, I can access yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So lender B doesn't add any value mm -hmm. into the context of this test case. So go back to your uh, don't uh, add any more yeah. work than what you need to add it for your test case. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, go, go ahead. Scroll down. Yeah. So for one key thing that itself you should notice it. If you're mm -hmm. looking for the test summary, you just referred only lender A. Yeah, because uh, I just uh, separated okay. lender A and B, but I'm working on for lender A only here. I'm just checking for lender A. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is that if you mm -hmm. were checking for that, that should give you a clue that your precondition, the mm -hmm. second one you have written it down, adds no value. So you can take it down okay. to the reference from your test case. Okay. Okay, all right. Hold 
closing. Uh, Wayne Mary? Yes. Yep. You can scroll down. Yeah. Let's let's move okay. forward. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah, I just put the steps. Um, so your homepage, yeah, mm -hmm. view, uh, verify, letter in, the login ID. Yeah, I would say is you probably need to rework. Take an example of what we did that before. Mm -hmm. Because remember, lenders are not submitting credit applications. Yeah, yeah, that's I noticed. We have right. to first create the application, right? Again, your yep. test steps, you should never be verifying anything in the steps. You should be taking an action, mm -hmm. right? So you have all this verification thing. Yep. At the most, all you're doing is viewing the application here and verifying the expected results. Yes. Okay. So do you, do you okay. understand you change your uh, wavery? Yeah. Um, can you make correction? You just did for Purvangi. Is it okay or I have to do it myself? Yeah, I would, I would have them do it. Yeah. Because the process is not that mm -hmm. we want to do the correction. The whole thing is that now that you learned something, can you go back and apply? Okay, sure. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, because every test case is going to be different, okay? In the real yeah, life, I understand. Apply different projects and they will all have different things. So, even if we correct all each and every test case for you, uh, but you ultimately have to write it uh, mm -hmm. on your own if you want to see your progress from that checkpoint. We can point you in the right direction, but we're probably not going to be able to write each and every. Okay, okay. yeah, sure, that's fine. But I think I hopefully you understand what changes you need here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Otherwise, uh, we can discuss that. I mean, uh, that's something you can sort of. Okay. Yeah. Is everybody else good here in the class? Do you guys know what is what is this to be done here? All right. Okay. Well, we will we'll, we'll review this uh, again. I think uh, same one. Once you get yeah, it, finish it and then send us, right? So we can review it. We can review it after. Okay. All right. You can stop sharing. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Now let's look at the test cases that you guys have written in here. Okay. So why don't you email Harshal your test case? Yeah, you can just email so me. So we can. And I'll just put it up here. here so that everybody can see it. So. Uh, Pick just one, okay? Send, just send one that, that you think is uh, closer to completion or something that you have good understanding um, so that you can talk about it. Trust me, you guys have to put a, for, do the work, I mean, in the real life anyway. So you better start now. Um, And it's okay. I mean, we'll, we'll review it and see what correction you need to make. Uh, Hashal, what we're supposed to do now? Like, um, we're going to review the other, other test cases in the class. So, okay. yep, let's pay attention here because I'm sure uh, you guys worked through that other one. Okay, so I got Shruti yours. Mm -hmm. Um, let's give everybody a minute. Make sure you see email me at least one that you think is correct, okay, from your standpoint, and then I'll let you speak. So, uh, so this is give, give a minute, I think, everybody. Uh, did everybody email me at this one? Actually, the screen is not too clear. Like I'm not able to read any anything on the screen. 
Um, are you on the presentation? Oh, hang on. I need to, sorry. I need to share yeah, the screen. Yeah. Yep, I haven't shared it yet. So, yep, now you should be able to see it. Sorry, good, good thing that you reminded. Thank you. All right, so then let's let's go ahead um, and see see what you have. So this case, case is for the lender can approve uh, the credit application by changing the status. The one of the leave. Uh, where okay, so which one was it? Uh, requirement number wise. Uh, requirement two point two. Two point two here. Okay, gotcha. So it's number one here. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. This is the okay. Let's see. This is the okay. So this one can change status, approve. Okay. So I think we saw the rejection, right? So it's very similar to that. Yes. It's kind of like exactly the same, just a rejection. So hold hold up onto that because it's, a, it's kind of like the same part, right? Yeah. But she that. still needs to fix a whole bunch of things. So do you know what all you need to fix it now? Based on what we discussed? I have done few changes, but I don't know if it does right or wrong. Okay. Okay, so let, let's talk through it, right? The preconditions, do you need three? Do you need to change any? What changes are you gonna make with that? What are you testing here? Uh, length of changes to status to approve. Okay. So we don't need the second step. Uh, do you need the email address? Is it relevant here? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, that is what I took into consideration. Like, you no, know, he has to receive an email notification, then only you can change the state. That's what I. But remember, based on discussion, we just said it's two different systems. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, do you still need it based on that oh, understanding? No. The first one. So, you got to scratch out the first one. System has a valid lender email ID. That's okay. irrelevant here. Okay. Because it doesn't really matter. They have valid or invalid. What about the second one? That is also not. That's also not valid, right? So this one goes away. Um, so first two precondition go away. Okay. What is missing? Uh, um, Just only the ID. So you need to have a lender in the system, right? Valid lender account. Uh, so you probably want to specify that there. Even more importantly, what did we talk? What did we talk about the rejection? If I have to make it repeatable, what do I need to do? I need to create every time. I can't just assume a precondition that something exists, right? Because I want to make it repeatable. So I have to create credit application every time to guarantee that it is in the submitted status that I can do an action on it. So if I have to create a credit application, what should be true in precondition? Who is going to create that credit application? Dealer, right? Yeah. So you need to make sure the dealer exists. Dealer also exists, and uh, mm -hmm. then you need to add the staff for credit application creation. Uh, yeah. Okay. But once you add that dependency, do you have those dependencies? You take out those preconditions. No. Yep, the dependencies go away, right? We see you said they are irrelevant here for this test case. And again, your test summary will need to refer to approve only. It's only to approve, right? Right. Yeah. yeah because you don't really care notification. Because right? <coughs> you have separate test case for testing notification. Okay. So your steps now will change. Yeah, the steps will change. Okay. The email notification will not be there. So like the logins. Okay. So scroll it down a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's talk about, right? You're going to change those steps, yeah. right? And then how do you know that it's successfully changed? How do you know it's in a fluid status now? We have to log in as a dealer and yeah. check if it, when he gets notification, I'll 
log in as a reader and see if the notification is showing the status. Ah, do I have to worry about notification? No. So you just log in as a dealer, right? Yeah. Why do you need to check notification, right? Yeah. Log in as a dealer, then okay. you review the application and check its status to make sure it's in a full status. So is the uh, step five required here? System sends me the notification? To no, that, that should be part of it is when lender makes the changes. Okay. You should you just say, say system is going to send an email notification. Okay, then uh, I should edit as number of application status is changed to approved and, and the email, is, email notification has been sent to the dealer. Okay. But then that's all. You don't care for the email notification. Okay. You're going to log out as the lender, okay. log in as a dealer, okay. pull up that same credit application okay. that you created in the steps here, mm -hmm. and then view that it's there's a status has changed to approve. That's what you're verifying okay. that the status is shown that it's approved. Okay. So, other than the steps one, I should delete the step one. Uh, the steps two, three, and four, right? You have to read either. Okay. Remember the logic we said because we change our thing. It's not about just going only directly to them. You have to log in as a dealer, create a credit application, note it down, and then do the steps. Okay. So I have to start it from this. Yeah, I would yeah. suggest you start from there, from there, and then work yeah. through that. I just think of it, right? One of the characteristics has to be it has to be repeatable. So if I execute once, I change the status. Yeah. And if I try to rerun, is it going to meet precondition? No, it's going to fail. Okay. Right? That means I have to go back into the database and change that step. But sometimes you may not have access to it back in. Or you should not, because there is something else already happened after you approved it in the system. So you have to go back and create it every time. That's the cleanest way that you do it. Because every time it's a new credit application, since you created, you know that it will be in subject status only. Okay, so from the point of view from the dealer, we have to start from the dealer, then create an yep. application yes. and submit it, then yep. receive as a lender. That's yeah. correct. Review, then start, change the status again, go back as a dealer and check it. So right. That is correct. It doesn't mean that. That's exactly so correct. Dealer, lender, dealer. Okay. That's how you so sequence the repeating. The topmost which has been started, you have to end with that part. Yes, because that's a verification set. No one. Right. Is everybody so, anybody else has questions? So right. the last dealer login, what did you check for? What should you check for? We have to change uh, check for the status has been changed to approved or not. Right. If it's approved status, then you know it has been successfully changed. Yeah, because sometimes what happens is uh, programmers uh, say, yep, uh, so you the successful message when, when the lender saves it, but nothing happens in the system. They, they forget to put the actual logic behind it. So that's what you are testing. You log out, log back in as dealer and see if you are able to pull up the same app and see that status is actually approved. So in preconditions, should I also add the dealer also exists in the system? Yep. That and is then I don't have to create my username and password there. I have to just no, you just say it just exists and put it in the data field that this is user ID and a password dealer will be used to log in. So, so that's the cookie, the dealer will be logging into the system homepage. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, to just trigger start with that process, creation yeah. process, yeah. and then log out and do the other things and then okay. okay. Yeah. Remember, your login step always remains the same. Okay. Whether you are able to use enter user ID. Yeah. Yeah. Is everybody else said anybody else has a question here? What we discussed. It's going to be some work. Okay, I mean, uh, you guys need to have put some thoughts around it. Work work. There will be some thought process. Okay, there is always some thought process here. Remember, I showed you. The estimate is 67 days. Yeah. It's not pulled up in the air. You have to do all this work. Yeah. And this is the planning part. You still have to do execution part. Well, execution is only 20%. Okay. Planning is 80%. That's what you're going to spend most of your days. Execution, you're going to go through the step. It's no brainer. There is no brain behind it when you try to execute and capture the actual result. That's it. That's only 10 to 15% of the time. Just following this. 
That's all you're doing. You're creating doing. this is this is the world. This is the real world. This is where you're gonna spend your lot of your energy and brain. Yeah. So for this, what will be the post condition? The post condition is that like the application status is changed to approved. Right. So that is the yeah. yeah, but in this case, since you are creating, right? Yeah. What you need to do is application is created in the system and is in the approved status. Those are the two posts. I'm testing as a dealer, and then I'm testing as a dealer, so I'm sure. Yeah. All right. No questions. So um, we are moving on. Go to the next one. Okay. Fifty. I'm gonna pull up yours. You want to change a few things? <laughs> but that's okay. Then. That's okay. That's all right. Okay, um, let's take a look at it. Which one you want? No, no, go, uh, back, what? go back. Go back. That's the one, right? Uh, those are the. Which one did you change anything recently, today, or anything? These are the ones, right? Just let me know which one you like us to take a look at. It. You have five or six. Okay. Um, let's talk about which which one you are doing first. What is the this what are you just the access? So this one is same as what. Whatever well, we had it, right? Yeah. This is the same as uh, okay. hearts, mm -hmm. right? And so she needs yeah. to modify hearts, and uh, you have to modify the same way uh, for that. Because we talked about like a uh, two applications you can pick because it's more than one. So yeah. Um, okay. So I think so what I would like it, just like what we're doing. Now that you understand it, now that we have talked through it, I want you to change this thing and let's review it once you change. It's the same one, so that's the reason yeah. we're not gonna see it here again. Yeah. Okay, yeah. unless you are a different one. Yeah, there are other ones. Okay, so right. which one you want to talk? Five. Five. Okay. Uh, this is notification. Yeah, this one is same as a dealer gets notification by email. This is just a lender, right? Yep. So this one is similar steps. You create credit application, you submit it, and then you you get to verify the notification part. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let me see it quickly and see what you have. I think she is on the right track. She just needs to modify a few things. Yeah. So kind of standard. Mm -hmm. Application display fill the requirement. Submit. Yep. Yep. Email. Okay, so again, the verification, you are missing the steps here to log into the email account and verify there. Yeah. So you need to correct it, right? You know what to correct here. I think otherwise you have, you are on the right yeah. track, okay, for this one. So that, that part, make sure you correct it and uh, we will review it here. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Go to and All right, sir. No, uh, that's the same thing. Oh, yeah. lender by email. Yeah. Okay, so make sure you correct uh, whatever you are based on your understanding now, right? Uh, make sure you fill out all the details and correct <laughs> it. Okay. Okay, let's look at it. Um, look at one of the Okay. Oh, this is just test tree. Test tree. You send a test tree? I will send the test case. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. different. Image. Okay, one very different. Talk about. Yeah. Let me see. So this is the one that we wrote it in the future. Okay, let's see. Your lender can access only one credit application assigned to them. We see it here. Is that do we have one scenario for one yeah. application? That one, one. Okay, gotcha. One app assigned. 
So this should be very similar to the other one we talked about, right? It should be almost identical. It's just one. Yeah. So you have to provide the details. So Lila, you again, based on what we discussed, went through, right? All those things. Make sure you put put the right detail here. Login as dealer. Dealer gets. Dealer is successfully logged in. Now yeah. change the wording as well. Yeah. yeah, you have to provide more detail. Fill in credit start. application. Submit logout. Login as dealer. Give application ID that dealer. So here you need to create the application, assign to that lender, and that lender logs in, right? And then then that lender will see one credit application assigned to them. Okay. Uh, so you need details around it. Yes, uh, Harshal, I have a question on this one. Yep. So in this one, uh, so we have to check lender can only access the credit application assigned to them. So, so once we will create the application as a dealer, and then a lender is going to check the application. So does he, we uh, we have to i have to mention on the credit application check if the like how i'm going to verify if this is the uh, application that belongs to me or it should belong to someone someone else some other lender is it with the land is it with the application id or is it with the lender's id that will be on the credit application <laughs> so if you look at it right one of the data that you have to provide it when creating credit application is which lender it's going to be assigned to. Yes. That's why you're going to pick the lender from the list of lenders available. Mm -hmm. Select it, and that's what you're going to see. It. I'm sorry, I'm not clear. Like a dealer, he he is going to select out of 10 dealers, suppose he has selected yeah. lender one, lender you're going to pick which lender it's going to go to. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, they can send to only one lender at a time, yeah. the credit applications. Based on the uh, like a risk factor, they will determine, hey, this guy is uh, based on the income, I'm gonna send to this particular lender so that it's, there is a more chance of approval. Well, well, a lot of times it's the lender that they are comfortable with that dealing with it. Okay, now my question is, suppose if a dealer, he has submitted multiple applications to multiple lenders, yes. is, so, so in case like in this I'm testing, okay, when I will open, suppose I'm a lender, I'm opening lender account. So there is application. If, do I need to mention some, some steps? Okay, this application belongs to the lender A. Does it, maybe wow. there is a case if it's belong to someone else? Okay, so think of it, right? When you're viewing the credit application, and you're specifying the ID, right? Uh, you mean lender ID? No, credit application ID. Okay. And when lender logs in and clicks on that ID to view the details, one of the field will be assigned lender or and created by which field. Mm -hmm. You should be able to see all of that data and verify, is it assigned to me? Is my name there or not? Okay. Go back into the credit application data fields and see what all data fields it captures. So in the steps, I will write, do we need to write, okay, click on the application and yeah, on the application, I'll... you have to see, oh, this is the lender ID. So this is my lender ID. So this application yeah. belongs to same. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you have to open the actual application and uh, verify that it's assigned to me. Uh, that's the verification step. Okay, so, so there is, uh, my question is, so while creating the application, long, uh, so there is a, Application ID as well. Yeah, but the application, ID, it's a different thing. Don't confuse two things. Okay. Okay. Think about it. Application ID talks about that particular application. Yes. It's like social security number, right? We all have some unique number. That's all it matters. That's all it is. Okay. Now, when you're logging as a lender, you have to think about it. What you are viewing? Are you viewing lender or are you viewing credit application? I'm using credit application. Okay, so what is more important if you're trying to view a credit application? It will be credit application ID, right? Yes. But once you look at it, what data that credit application contains is where you look into the lender. Mm -hmm. Right? And again, don't assume 
just because you have an ID, that doesn't mean the credit application is going to just show only IDs. They may be showing your landed name and the details. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So you need to understand what it's going to show and what detail you're going to verify. Uh, okay. And one, one more question. Like when a dealer creates an application, so then system will automatically generate an application number. And then yes. a it, then a lender will receive the same application. So there will be some on the lender's uh, account, there will there will also be some application number. So both those numbers, they will be same or they may or may not seem. Well, they have to be the same. If okay. it's different, then it's two different application IDs, right? But two okay. different applications. Okay. Okay, so can we verify with this number as well? Because the application that dealer has created and the lender has received both also have the same application number other than than the lender id just remember you are just picking the id generated in the steps and using that for the subsequent one so it has to be the same so for a moment think about it you put you place an order on amazon mm -hmm. right you get yes. an order id that's what the order id you refer to that now, whether that order belongs to you, it's not searched okay. by you, right? Okay. They look at okay. the order ID and says, okay, which customer it belongs to. Yes. Same thing, you get a credit application ID and says which lender it belongs to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let's look at the last one. Have you send it? Uh, send it back. Okay. So what are we missing here? Um, it's only him. Okay. So I, I'm hoping you guys have a little bit more clarity now. Um, at least you can write one solid, one more solid one. Okay. Don't use the same one. I want you guys to write a brand new one. Okay. At this time, you can review with that, get the feedback from the team members as well. Okay. But let's get at least one more down. Yeah, so I, I want you to do two things first. Yeah. Okay. You definitely need to fix the one that you have. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So first fix that. Make sure somebody else has an opportunity to read it and make sure that they understand it. Second thing, I want you to pick one another test case that we haven't talked here in the class so far. Right? Because we viewed a whole bunch of test cases. Pick a completely new one and write that step, step, step by step detail. And again, review it with another customer. The same requirement? Yeah, it's the same set of requirements. You have tons of test cases. Actually, I would just say go back and write one of the password ones. Yeah, you have password. Remember, you have your three two. Yep. So pick a password one if you want it. And write into step by step detail. And once you do that, yeah. you're gonna get more homework. So just yeah. be getting done today. So okay. look, why don't we do one thing? Because I definitely want you guys to think about it, whether how much progress you're making here. So right, update the one that you've been viewing here. Okay, fix that. And then I want everybody to write the password so that when we yeah. to present it, you all can see it. What I wrote it versus what other person wrote. Yep. And you can review each other and say, hey, I did this versus why yeah. did you do this? Okay. So write the password one and write the one which is the successful valid, whether it's eight characters, one uppercase, and one special character. No negative ones. Okay, on that. Yep. <laughs> so everybody clear what test case I'm talking about? Yes. How about everybody uh, online? online? Uh, can you please repeat because the connection yeah. was lost? Oh, is yeah. it? Okay. Good. So Fix the one that we've been asking you to fix it. Mm -hmm. okay. And Baurangi, we fixed yours. So I would like you to pick one another one that you've written that can fix that. And second one is once you're done with that, write the password. Remember the in the last, uh, last Sunday's class, I draw the password tree, mm -hmm. the requirement one. Yeah. So yeah. I want you to pick the test case, which is a positive test case, which is 
If you want to validate a password needs all eight characters, one upper case and one special character. Yeah. The correct one. The yes. correct one. Yep. Yeah. This one. So Not you want the correct. Uh... Yeah. So and you then want then... us to write the two test cases now? Yes. One so... is fix it. Hang on. One, you need to fix it. Which one? Right. Which one you want want us to? Fix? The one that we reviewed in the class for you. you need okay. To it, right? Today. 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 Right. Okay. Fix that one. That's first one, and second one is the password. Okay. Okay. And okay. I'm going to give all of you thirty minutes to do that. It's eleven thirty. Okay. And at twelve o'clock, we'll start reviewing the password one. Is everybody clear? What do you need to do for the next thirty minutes? Yes. Make sure you write yes. individually, okay? Not the team, but you yeah. can re feel free to review with others. But first, you write it down yourself. Yeah, it's not a team assignment; it's an individual assignment. So we have to do two cases right now. That is yes. Yeah. Okay. Alright, okay, uh, specifically for you, you have to pick another one yeah. plus part, okay? Because we corrected your C in the class. Alright, did you send that email to Harsha? The one yes. that we picked. Yes, I did. And Herschel send it out. So yeah. they just use that Uh, Pauragi, I don't see email from you. Um, did you send me today, uh, right now? Yes, I did. I can resend. I can check. Let me see here. Uh, send to Harshal Harshal Patel. Uh, that uh, Harshal dot Patel seventy one at gmail dot com. I think you might have sent to Dilip, maybe. No, I have sent to Harshal dot Patel seventy one at gmail dot com. Okay. Not able to find it here. Oh, requirement DP mail? Is it the one? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yep. I'm forwarding that to folks here.
Yeah, we can let them work. I was like, you are putting more things on my computer. Please go away from here. Yeah. All right. Who wants to present it? Anybody? Cash from online, doesn't matter. You sent yours? Okay. <clears throat> um, this one? This. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, good. Uh, explain, uh, see what you have. Marshall, it's not in presentation mode. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Could you share the screen? Yeah. Yeah, please. Sorry, I forgot to share. Okay, hopefully you guys can see it now. Yeah, go ahead, Dad. Uh, uh, see what you have. See what your thought process is. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a first one and one two minutes. Uh, can you yeah. let me speak up? Let, let's yeah. start from here. Yeah. Uh, the password is going to be created in the password with eight characters, one upper line, and I mean, of characters and special characters. Okay. Depends on the norm. Just from a creating a body, uh, 
user ID and the value track to load to the Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. See, things doesn't match. I think you have copy paste probably oh, here. Yeah, yeah, you got to make sure before you submit it or send it so that at least copy paste issues are not there. Let's go. Okay. See what are the steps. Um, okay. Do you, did you copy paste something here? Looks like it. The copy paste from the other stuff. Uh, oh, is it? Yes. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, send me the updated one or something, right? Let's look at or it. We can send look, look at somebody else who has a completed as well. Anybody has a completed one? Did you send it? Uh, this one? No, oh, this guy. Okay. This is my um, the A project. Okay. I mean, one Okay. Yeah, so it's not test case, right? This is a password must be. Password must be. So, password. what are you testing, right? It's a password. So, eight. Uh, what is the X? Character. Character. Oh, characters. Okay. All right. One uppercase. Okay. And one Special characters. Uh, okay. Yeah. So just to clarify the title, okay? I mean, you need to be clear on the title. Um, so it's a password. Okay. Yeah. Okay. These are ID and the register. Okay. So I'm going to hang on to asking questions about precondition till I see the test uh, steps. Okay. Okay. So this one is the same as that. So let me see the steps. Let us see the steps. Okay. So my question to you is can anybody explain when this password creation scenario is going to come into play? So Gifted, this one is a little bit different uh, than we what we expected here. Because yeah. it's it's a different testing different thing, not the password here. So mm -hmm. this test case is not valid, uh, not correct here. Mm -hmm. So let, let's see, anybody else wrote uh, anything else? So you need to rewrite uh, yours, okay? Let, let me ask a question before we say who is gonna share it. When is this test case is gonna come into picture? When would you execute it? I mean, what is the functionality we are talking here? When we say password must be eight characters and uh, those things. When we are creating account. So hang on, hang on one second. When you said after creating a user ID, so you're saying I'm going to create a user ID without creating a password. You can't create the ID without creating the password, right? Okay. So, so your scenario that, hey, after creating user ID or your precondition user ID existing system, doesn't make sense. Well, at that time, it's already created. So when, when you ask me to log in into the system, the password is already created. It's already there. This is at the time of creation. So somebody said it online. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's while creating a new user. While creating a yes. new user. Okay. Yeah. When are you going to create a new user? Or who is going to create a new user? Let's start with that. I'm sorry, can you please repeat? Who is going to create a new user? Who is like, going to create a new user? The dealer. Dealer? Any, anyone like Anyone, yeah. Like, anyone can be the start of the... Ooh. Like if it's a RPREF and he's signing with a new dealer. How do I find who else can create a user? Let me start with that. You just speak up loud so they can hear them. Is it a manager user? Okay. Tell me the requirements. Tell me which location and requirements are. By the way, I have a two teenager girls at home, so I'm fairly used to people throwing darts at me, assuming that I'm going to take a bait and answer the question. 
So where would I find who all can create a user? Tell me the page number, tell me the requirement number. That essentially tells me who all can create a new user. Come on, it should not take you this long. It's under manage users 2.6.2. Okay. So it's in 262 where you have the table, right? Mm -hmm. Security table, which talks about who can create what user. Right? So one of you mentioned that, hey, this requirement is going to come into the play when I'm going to try to create a new user. So now you know who all can create new user. You know when this case needs to be done. So based on that, who has the step-by-step -step instruction that validates this requirement? Don't throw the dust. Show me your, send your code here, we'll pull it up here. So did, did on way, online, I mean, you guys wrote uh, the test case? Yes. Okay. Can one of you share? Uh, I can share mine. Uh, Okay, go, go ahead. ahead and share. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, everybody. Uh, go ahead. Okay, so, yeah. Sorry? Tell me about your precondition. Let's start from precondition because I think it's everything else that's clear to me. Okay, so I, uh, what I think, like I assume that username is already created. So I just put as a precondition that username is already created and we are just concentrating on creating password. Okay, so okay. the username is, it's, that's what I show it here, which is G training uh, and it belongs to dealer, dealer user. So the, uh, Problem I have, I worry with that, mm -hmm. is if I put in that precondition that the user already exists in the system, mm -hmm. are you creating a user ID separate than creating a user account separate? It could be the each review, actually, this thing could be valid. No, but just, mm -hmm. there's no edit. There's no requirement says that I should be able to go and edit the password to be done. Um, the requirement is on the creation, right? Creation, yeah. So I want to focus on it mm -hmm. is so you said dealer user exists in the system with g training let's look at the steps what this dealer user is doing okay yep so do you see the problem here where we based on what we talked so far um Look at your step two and step three. Mm -hmm. If I'm already logging in as a G training, mm -hmm. that means I should already have a password that is created for me, which should meet those criteria. Okay. So at yeah. that point, I'm not validating it anything. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's talking about the creation of password. Yeah. Okay. So you have to rethink the way you write the steps. Anybody else? Uh, can I share? Yes, uh, go ahead and uh, stop sharing now, Yeah. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right, let's dive into the step. So in the steps, I have created the username first, uh, and then. What are you missing here? Sorry? What are you missing between step one and two? Oh, sign in? No, so when I when I go to homepage. Yeah. 
Am I able to create a username from home page? Do, don't you need to log in as somebody to create it? Remember, what did I ask question? Who all can create a yeah. user? Yeah. You're missing that whole piece. Okay. So uh, in the requirement, we have different, like regional manager can create certain um, dealer user, RF yeah. user, and uh, area manager can create some type of users, and uh, ARF representative can create dealer user type. So how should we write each and every? Well, we are not even asking you right. Let's write with one first. Okay. Let's not worry about everything and mm -hmm. anybody. Let's pick one that you can validate it. Okay. So, so I guess what Dilip is saying, right? I mean, you just need to pick one who has access to create a user, one login account. Maybe it could be area manager, could be site admin, or could be somebody else. Okay. okay. So, so uh, if I can. Create... Does anybody else has anything different? I think most of people are different. So okay. <laughs> she's the only one who has a little bit correct. Oh, huh? Similar to that. Okay. Send it. That's fine. Let's, let's, okay. re let's review it so, what you have. There are two things that I've been noticing, right? That you need to start thinking about it. First, you have to put it as whenever you're like you're trying to write a test case for a requirement, you have to understand the context when this requirement will be tested or executed in the system, right? So it clearly says that, but hey, my password must be that. Well, you need to figure out at what point I create the password, okay? Who does the work? And in order to figure out what point I'm creating it is, well, who should be doing that work? So you need to track it like it's, this is where the completeness of the requirement comes in and correctness comes in. Do you understand the whole stack of how this thing is going to get executed? Right. So in this scenario, first you need to figure out who all can create a user because that the password is going to be created at the time of the creation of the user. Well, in order to create a user, you need to figure out who I'll create. So that's what the person you need to log in as well. And then you need to understand it is what process they will follow to create the user. With me so far? And, and in this case, this is a positive test case, right? So your data element is gonna be is when I'm creating that user, the password I'm providing meets this criteria. And as long as I use the one which meets this criteria, I'm able to successfully create a user. Yes, no? Well, do you have to mention the uh, account is, uh, for the behavior or for the... So you have to first figure out who is logging in to create a new user. Okay, and what type of user he or she is creating. At that time, you have to understand it, the password creation. Then, A, you need to have a user successfully created. Two, you need to log out. And you need to log back in as whichever user you created with that password to make sure can you log in into the system with the new password. So like, uh, it's like in the second step, if I am creating the user, I might be a area manager. What site? My site administrator would be the easiest one. one, right? Just pick, pick one. one. Yeah, site I don't care which you pick, but pick one. Okay. And uh, since the, uh, the area manager can manage RFREP users, I can create an RFREP user. Yeah. So I will leave my login ID and I will start creating an RFREP user name and RFREP password. Yes. Now, can I create a user? The system will also create it. Right. So you need to understand in order to create a user, what is the minimum piece of information I need to provide? The first name and the last name. So it will also create. Right. But it's not only that. You have to give the entire information that is required in order to create a user. 
because you are looking at the user entity, right? So right. in the system design, it's everything together. You can't give like a part. Can pick and choose. I'm going to give you only the three pieces of information. Okay. So the whole data should be filled. Yeah. The whole data the yep. form should be filled in, well, and yep. then it will. Yeah, click save. And one of them is password. Yeah. And what password do you need to provide? The one that meets this rule. Okay. okay. Right. And how do you know it works? Because then you will be able to successfully create the user. Mm -hmm. Who can turn around and log into the system security? So you need to think about it, right? So you can't just simply create a user with a password right away on the fly from the home page because not everybody has that permission. Not everybody can do it. If that's the case, anybody could do it. I don't have to sign up a deal or that. But there is a structure, there's a security report. So you don't understand that context, and that's how you need to build your page. So there is a person who will create a user. We can't do it. No, anyone can't do it. Yeah, there's a security, right? Security, security mechanism. For us, for the security. That is, that and it can be created from the login page of the system, because that's how most of you wrote it down. Yeah. That's so funny. Right? And that is how you, you, you just create it and say, hey, for this user, let me just create the password. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. Think about it, if that's the case, right? Oh, you could just go to any bank account and create whatever you want, right? But you can't do that. You have to actually first create an account as a going through the teller or going through some other process, and then you can create a user account. They have to come up with that. They have to come together. Or you create a user ID password and then a link an account to it. You can't just go and do both at the same time. So this last account number precisely create the user. Right. So at the same case, right? If I'm creating it, I should have that permission first. And then whatever I'm creating it, then only they can log in. Yeah. This task is simple, but uh, it uh, requires a little bit thinking who is doing the work and uh, how what data elements and other things you will need. So okay. after creating, I will log off as a uh, area manager. Again, I will log in as an art rep with the, that user name and password. Again, I check if that is valid. Yes. Yeah, I you can do it. I should do it. If I don't log in, if I can't log in, that means Something the password is good yeah. job. I mean, a couple of ways you can validate it. Uh, either you log go through that process or check in the database itself. Run a query and see if the password is stored correctly with that uh, username, yeah. uh, whatever the mechanism you specified. So, but since you don't have those access database, yeah. so in, in most of the other one, most of the modern system, they don't uh, store the password in a, in a simple in text format. Yeah, so it's always encrypted. So, yeah. even if you have access to the database, yeah, you can't true. decipher the password. Yep, you have to use this mechanism. So yep. you can write the test case using any of the. Yeah. Method. You can pick anyone who is able to create, but you have to know what type of user they can create. Because a dealer can create an art. Yeah. Right? That's why that table is important for you to understand. Okay. Any question online? Uh, I have a question on this. Yes, go ahead. So, like, let's consider the case a site admin. He is uh, having a one conversation and site but, admin. He is creating a dealer account. Sorry, I missed your. Can you repeat so, that? Yeah, site admin who is creating a dealer account. Okay. So, in this case, the entity users form. So, there is a information about user ID, username. So uh, my question is like most of the websites, uh, when when we complete the form, we do not we do, do not require to com uh, complete the whole form. So in the password section, so if we enter the correct correct password as mentioned, like one upper character and whatever it is, so if we enter the correct one, then it will allow us to complete the whole form. And if we do not enter the correct password, then it will. Uh, show some red button or some message. 
so so would do so do we need to uh, enter the complete information like first name last name password user id or so, yeah dimple this information you can discuss with the design team as well uh, okay. and get you more clarification um what should we have uh, the um, requirements document up which yeah, is the design document Maybe at that one. The design. Okay. Whoever was sharing, can you stop sharing? I'm not sure if you can send it the other way. Let's go There you go. Okay. So, Dimple, think yeah, about. Can you do the presentation more? Yes, yes. And, um, yeah, sure. Okay. Did you guys see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is a user table from the design document. Okay. And it in the last column, it tells it what fields are mandatory and required. So when you're trying to create a user and you're at the form to create a user. You have to, at a minimum, provide everything that is flagged as a required. If you're missing anything, it should not allow you to create a user. Okay. And since we are talking only the positive test case in this scenario, mm -hmm. you have to identify all those things which is required. And you have to use the password, which is meets the criteria. And that's the only thing you should be able to create. You don't have to worry about scenario where it fails to create it. Because you're not testing that test case. You're doing only the positive test case here. Okay. Does it help Dimple? So like, um, like if I open some website, so while if I'm creating a new account and sometimes sometimes like when i enter a complete password as per the description it should have one upper one lower and special yep. and then only then it allows me to go further right so dimple the way they might be storing is uh, password information in a separate uh, entity uh, they might be storing address user information in a separate entity and so forth so it again goes back to the design how okay. they are implementing it okay. but here it says so it, you have to enter all of this information okay. in order okay. to create entity. Yep. Yeah. Because it's part of the single entity here. Yes. Okay. And and this user ID, it is system generated. So right. It says it. anything which is system generated, you don't need it. But okay. look at that. Password. Yes. What does it say? It's required. And it's a text. Even the username is auto generated based on first name and last name. That means those two fields are required. So if you look at a first name and last name, those are required fields. Yes. Yeah, there are a lot of details I mean, in the document. Sometimes you have to read it uh, three times, five times, and try to digest uh, where things are and so forth. So I would strongly recommend, I mean, if you forgot about the requirements and design, maybe read one more time um, and, and see if that helps you. The way you might want to think about it is, yeah, you may not remember, nobody is going to remember the whole document. Okay. So you need to think about is when you're pulling that requirement, well, what are the dependencies and start going into those sections and reading them into those sections. That's how you pull the thread. Anything which is associated with that, you need to know it. And then only you can write those things. So you should, by now, you should have figured out the pattern, right? No matter what you do, you have to understand where it fits into the system, how it triggers, what it triggers. Because you talked about blender is able to approve or reject it. Well, it's not in isolation. Dealer has to first create it, assign it to lender. Then only I can do something about it. 
right? So you have to figure it out what way you're going to go, what path you're going to take it in order to validate that. Steps you have to provide all of them yeah. in the, the data. You just don't say, no, hey, provide all the required. Then what you have to provide all of them, including that. Yeah. That is correct. So I think we're actually coming close to one. Yeah. So here is what I want you to do it between now and tomorrow. Okay. So you have to pick up the pace. And when I say pick up the pace, remember we talked on last Sunday, you have to write eight test cases, completed, right? Now you got the feedback, what I would expect is write those eight test cases completely with the information and the knowledge that you got it, including the password one, okay? So you've got to be ready for it. We'll review it one more time tomorrow, but we're not going to spend continuously spending time with that. You got to pick it up the pace. You have to be ready with that. You can't say, hey, I have it only partial. Right? From now onwards, I would be expecting if you're present in your test case, even if it's right or wrong, it has to be complete. Can be a partial. Okay. And you have to apply yourself those criteria. If I give it to somebody else in the class. Will they ask me tons of questions? Or can they take that information, run against the system, and tell, yeah, it passed or failed? Right? Because when you look at some of the steps that you've done, some of those criteria are missing today. Right? You can't just say application A or application B. Well, what is application A? I have to give the specific ID. Okay? So that's the first thing I want you to be done and get ready for tomorrow. Okay. And Marshall, do you want to talk about the Outlook account? Yeah. To make sure. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, eight test cases, right? Uh, hopefully, you guys can have it uh, by tomorrow or something because you're going to need it uh, for when we talk about the tools and technologies. You need to have a certain number of test cases so that you can practice uh, on that. And you can copy paste from the document to the tool and so forth. Uh, but tomorrow we will we're gonna dive into the technology side of things. So technology meaning we will start learning the tools. So definitely you're gonna need computer, laptops, whatever you have. Uh, plus you're gonna need an Outlook account, Microsoft Outlook account. So if you don't have one, go ahead and create one from home just for the class. Okay, so you can throw it away later on if you don't need it. Make sure so you make sure you remember the password. Okay. <laughs> we have seen the people forgetting the password when they create from home and so i uh, tell you you can't log in uh, when even they come to the class so make sure you write down the password somewhere but have the outlook account um hopefully you guys know where to go and create it so you go to the outlook platform okay and this is where you can create a new account uh, for your for the class so exactly. just yep and then there is or you can say create account. free account you follow that yeah if you have a hotmail uh it will work or live.com account it will work as well or outlook outlook.com so hotmail live or outlook i would suggest create one free account right here and uh, they just for the class so that you don't have to worry about it later. so while you're creating that right it may ask you the two level of authentication. So it might ask you a phone number or another email address where they will send the verification code and then you make sure you are able to do that. Yeah, you can put whatever you want, uh, classroom, QA class, whatever. Pick your email address. Yeah. So create that one outlook. And then essentially a uh, access to it, password, make sure you write it down, bring it. Yep. And, and we'll walk tomorrow we'll morning to create tomorrow. that thing. Okay. So for tomorrow, two things. Eight test cases completed and Outlook account. And then we're going to start looking into the tools, bringing those test cases in the tool. We're going to start looking into how to use, go through the entire life cycle of creating a test case. Step-by-step -step instruction, including what we did it and manually on the Word document, we're going to show you how you can do it in different tools. 
and where all the requirements and how you start tying test cases to the requirements. So I spent some time, maybe an hour or two today. Hopefully you guys have time today as to have at least few test cases there, okay, from home. Don't worry about whether it's a correct or not. We'll review it tomorrow anyway, once you put it in the tool. Here's the um, other thing. If you're done with it, right, which is great, don't stop, just continue writing it because this is the practice that you need to do. This is the key ingredient of the whole process and learning experience. Well, they, they will get to some more requirements yeah. anyway, uh, which we will review on Thursday. So yeah. some of the new test cases, sorry, the requirements. Yeah, somebody had a um, Who had a question? Somebody had uh, a question? Gleep, like uh, for tomorrow. So yeah. you will, we will be using the test cases in the technology. Yeah. Yes. So can you, can you please uh, mention like three or four? Because in case someone won't be able to complete all eight, like we should have ready the ones that we are going to use in the technology. Again, Limpal, the way I would just say is your assignment was starting last Sunday, right? So preferably eight, but I'm not going to specify which one you need to do, be done first. Right? Okay. Test cases in a complete way as you can. Okay. Okay. Yeah, eight, but... It is great. Yeah. If you don't have eight, you need at least four to five, because if you don't have any ready, then you're, gonna, you're gonna spend time here trying to write that test cases and you're gonna be falling behind. Okay. And I'll tell you, the case, it's gonna be picked up significantly because our assumption is you've been doing the work and you've been catching it up with things. So everything is gonna build on top of each other. So if you don't have this portion ready, the component that builds on top of it, you will not be able to catch up. Okay. Okay. Again, I'm not trying to make it push it, but th this is the reason why you paid the money to come to the class to learn it. You have to execute it. This is your end of the bargain. Yeah, you take it, it, it's it's fine if you can if it's not 100 percent correct or maybe 50 percent correct. Okay, but put an effort. Okay, that's all we are looking for, and we'll correct it here. That's all. But I think we, we have seen it. You guys are making progress. I have seen some uh, basically the second round of test cases, which are much better than the first one. So I think that's a progress from our standpoint. So. Yeah, and the, as we start executing, you will start getting an idea. You'll start reflecting those things in the world. Yeah. Okay. All right, any question before we wrap up for the day here? Yeah, of course. About insert homepage for user ID. So remember, in trying to create a password, you need to first figure out who can create a new user. You need to first log in as that user who is able to create somebody else. Then you have to create a user. You can't just say, this, hey, I'm going to put a password directly. So creating a password is part of the user creation process. So you have to create a user and then you can do it. Right? So most of the test cases I saw it was, hey, I'm going to go to login page. I have a user ID and now I'm creating a password. It doesn't work that way. You have to create a brand new user. You need to understand who can create a brand new user and you build a password as part of that creating user process. Okay. Yes, the steps are, I think, four or five, but yeah. that, that's all. It's not a complex test case. So write it, set it, update it the way you understood, and uh, we can we can talk tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Is the app URL correct one that they have? No, I, I'm going to send you that. Okay. So Harshal will send you information about application, right? If you have a time, just go explore. Yeah, explore it, yeah, just explore it. Okay, nothing, uh, nothing, uh, get familiar with the functionality and so forth with that tool. Okay, so we are planning to wrap up uh, here. Um, does anybody has any question online? Or you guys are good?
We're good. Okay. okay. All right. Then I'll see you. We will see you guys tomorrow at uh, eight fifty. Yeah, let's stop recording.